Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Today's video is most likely going to be a long one. Now, it's not on the Gaboon Viper. Today's video is going to be on rattlesnakes. So we're going to focus on discussing the genus Crotalus and Cistrusrus. Probably pronounced that wrong, but oh well. Crotalus is a genus of rattlesnakes, and then Cistrusrus is the genus that contains the pygmy rattlesnakes. And we'll discuss why they are separated into two separate genuses in this video. But anyways, if you're new here, I post videos on venomous snakes. If that's something you enjoy, please subscribe. Now, the reason I have the Gaboon Viper out is because I don't have a rattlesnake with me for this video. And during the off time when I'm not showing footage of rattlesnakes, at least you have something to look at. And I may do the point of view with the GoPro as I talk. So rattlesnakes, like I said, two genuses, Crotalus and Cistrusrus. And these are all pit vipers. Every single rattlesnake is a pit viper. They also are only found in the Americas. And they range from Southern Canada down to South America. But currently there are around 36 species of rattlesnake. And then within those species, there may be many subspecies as well. These animals are so diverse and just have the size, for instance, that they get large, like the Eastern Diamondback, super small, like the pygmy rattlesnakes. Now, as the name suggests, rattlesnakes are given that name due to the presence of a rattle on the tip of the tail. And like I mentioned in previous videos, many snakes, even non-venomous ones, will vibrate their tail as defense. Rattlesnakes just took that to the next level with the evolution of a rattle. Now they use it to warn predators and even other animals like big hooved animals of their presence in order to avoid being stepped on or to be left alone. And the thing with this is there are some exceptions to this rule. Some rattlesnakes don't have rattles. Those rattlesnakes found on islands where they no longer have use or need for the rattle because there's no big hooved animals for them to warn. So they no longer need the rattle. How amazing is that? We'll discuss more on this and go more in depth when we focus on the genus Crotalus. So I'll go over the species and other factors also that may cause a rattlesnake to lack a rattle. And the rattle, of course, is made of keratin. Same thing as hair and our fingernails, keratin. And they're loosely locked, hollow segments that make that sound when they vibrate it at speeds extremely fast. Now these snakes occupy a wide range of habitat and they're also very, very important to the ecosystem due to the prey they eat. So lots of the prey they eat, like rodents for instance, have diseases. And when they eat that prey, they're eliminating that disease from the environment. Other importances to the environment and ecosystem is that they're prey to other animals. So they are a food source, very important for other animals to survive. Additionally, play a role in human medicine. Now, venom has always played an important and crucial role in drug design development. One of the top 20 drugs of all time, a blood pressure medicine, is derived from venom from a South American pit viper. Now the dusky pygmy rattlesnake even, they developed a drug to stop heart attacks. An antiplatelet drug, it prevents blood clotting and helps these patients who may experience a heart attack. Another leading cause of death in the United States being helped by these awesome animals. So they are very important. And again, I've mentioned in a previous video about the timber rattlesnake venom having properties to treat ailments such as Alzheimer's 
and Parkinson. Their importance is extreme when you think about all the factors, the prey they eat, how they are very important to the environment by eliminating disease and by eliminating that disease in the environment, which also helps us because many of the diseases in rodents can be passed to us. And then ticks even that are on these animals, which carry Lyme disease are eliminated as well, but they're also prey for other animals. And again, the medical aspect of the venom. Very important. One of the most important animals on earth, in my opinion. Now let's go over the difference of crotalus and cestrus roos. So taxonomy, is a way of classifying organisms into groups. This originally involved in the past, just looking at visible features that are shared between them. So similar characteristics. So with rattlesnakes, things like presence of a rattle, also the body structure, the way they look, even scale count. And at that time, the difference came from the presence of nine large head scales on the top of the head of the pygmy rattlesnakes. But the species of rattlesnake and crotalus have many smaller scales. So there was that visible difference. But nowadays taxonomists, they do this classification by looking at ancestry, by taking a look at the DNA of these animals. Now moving on to some other general information regarding rattlesnakes. As I mentioned earlier in this video, rattlesnakes are native only to the Americas. So southwestern Canada all the way to central Argentina. Now within this geographic range, they can occupy many different habitats. Anywhere a terrestrial animal, reptile can thrive, typically rattlesnakes can also thrive. They'll be in those habitats. But this is generally speaking because some are very specialized and require specific requirements for where they're found. Examples of that would be altitude wise or even the type of habitat. So rocky or vegetative areas. Let us expand on the rattle itself now. So I mentioned it briefly in the beginning of this video, but as I said, the rattle's purpose is defensive. A warning to animals that may step on it and also a warning to predators. The rattle itself is made of keratin, the structural fibrous protein, which makes up hair, nails, scales, and many other parts. The rattle itself is created through the modification of the scales on the tip of the rattlesnake's tail. Now, when a rattlesnake's born, it has what's known as a pre-button. And then when they shed their skin for the first time, which is usually within the first week, it's replaced by the button. Now, when they shake their tail at this point, there's no sound at all. It's only until they shed again and another segment is formed that they'll begin to make a sound. So each time a rattlesnake sheds its skin, it gains a new segment, which is gonna bring us to a common myth believed by many. That myth is that you can tell the age of a rattlesnake by counting the number of segments on their rattle. This is clearly false because as I said, each time they shed their skin, they gain a new segment. Babies and even adults shed multiple times a year and they gain a segment each time. So let's just say a baby shed six times the first year. That's six segments in one year. Another thing that can happen and comes into play is that as the snake is moving through its environment and it has a long rattle, the rattle can catch on to things and break off. So a 15 year old rattlesnake, for example, can have two segments only if it breaks off at that point. Now let's move on to their sensory organs. Like all pit vipers, rattlesnakes possess the heat sensing pits. This structure you can see here between the eyes and nose. 
This pit enables them to detect and locate prey based on the prey's thermal radiation signature. The pits detect the thermal radiation from any warm-blooded animal, not just prey. This pit organ gives the rattlesnake an extreme advantage, especially while hunting at night. To understand how incredible this is, let's expand on it. The thermal radiation passes through the pits to membrane inside. This warms this part of the organ. The heat sensitive receptors located here are so precise that they can detect a candle flame from 10 meters or 33 feet away. Also, they can detect temperature changes as small as 0 0.003 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit in their immediate surroundings. The rattlesnake and other pit vipers superimpose the visual images based on what they see with their eyes to those by these thermal images from their pits to give the animal an accurate picture of their surrounding. This is extremely important during nighttime and should now be understood how this is so advantageous for these animals. Fangs, rattlesnakes, as well as every single species of viper possess selenoglyph dentition. This type of tooth are the most advanced of all the types of snake fangs. These fangs are the ones people think about when they think of snake fangs, a long, hypodermic needle-like fangs that swing out like hinges. Compared to lapids like cobras, mambas, and coral snakes, for example, which have short fixed fangs. The mobility in these fangs of the vipers enables them to fold the fangs against the top of their mouth while they're not in use. Rattlesnakes, as well as any other venomous snake, are born with fully functional fangs and venom. The fangs are connected by venom ducts to the venom glands. And then fangs regularly fall out or break off and are constantly being replaced. Usually there's three pairs of replacement fangs that are lying behind the functional pair. Venom. Now, venom is, of course, extremely complex. Many species of snake have mixtures of components in their venom. Primarily in rattlesnakes, though, the venom is hemotoxic, which affect blood and our tissue-destroying venoms. They cause necrosis and disrupt blood clotting. Some species also possess strong neurotoxic venom as well, and those cause paralysis and shuts down organs. Now moving on to the prey of rattlesnakes. Now they typically have a diet that consists of rodents, so mice, rats, even rabbits, squirrels, small birds, and other small mammals. And they're ambush predators, so they'll usually lie in wait for their prey to pass by. And rattlesnakes, when they bite their prey, they'll typically bite, inject the venom, and release. And they do this so they avoid getting hurt by the animal. So they'll bite, release, wait for the venom to take action and kill the prey. And then they'll follow the scent left behind by the prey once the animal dies. And then they consume the animal. Now the predators of rattlesnakes. Now they're heavily preyed upon by a variety of species, including birds of prey and things like bobcats and coyotes and even other snakes such as king snakes. King snakes will feed on rattlesnakes. And another snake, the indigo snake, another snake eater. Moving on to reproduction. So many rattlesnake species will mate during the summer or fall and others during springtime. And then females release scent, sex pheromones, and it leaves a trail that males follow. And then 
when they find the female, there's sometimes other males there and males will compete in male to male combat. Those are those videos you see of snakes intertwined, wrestling each other. And usually those videos are labeled as mating, but it's two males competing for the female. And when one of the males pushes the other male's head to the ground, that's who wins and gets the breeding rights to that female. And rattlesnakes are avoviviparous. Probably pronounced that wrong, but I do this constantly. But anyways, avoviviparous, this is similar to live birth, but it's kind of in the in between of egg laying and live birth. They retain the egg inside until it's ready to hatch and they give birth. So they come out in this little like fluid like sack. That's why it comes out looking like that. But again, very similar to live birth and that's what rattlesnakes do. And things with rattlesnakes are they usually take several, several years to become sexually mature and only reproduce once every few years. And that's why the, the ridiculous killing of rattlesnakes is driving their population so low because of how long it takes for them to become mature. All the other predators that are feeding on the baby rattlesnakes and adult rattlesnakes that are getting predated on, all this causing their populations to decrease. But one is natural, the other is human involved. Now, brumation, similar to hibernation, but the processes involved are different. But during the colder months, rattlesnakes will go through this period of brumation. Now, during these cold periods, they'll brumate with other species, including small mammals, animals that they would eat during the hot months. They're brumated together with them and other species of snake, like black rat snakes, copperheads, whatever snake species in that area. Isn't that amazing? And also, the cool thing about rattlesnakes, they have been shown to go to the same, sen same den site year after year. And this process is still unknown of how they do it, but they'll travel miles. And it's believed, to be it's believed that they follow pheromones scent trails or using visual cues or mixture between those. It's just so amazing. So the conservation status. So rapid habitat destruction by us is a major impact on their populations. But another thing that poses a massive threat to these animals are what's known as rattlesnake roundups. So just killing them in general also plays a role, but at these events, they gather thousands of rattlesnakes and slaughter them. And it's an event that takes place in the United States where they, it's labeled a family fun event. They gather thousands of these rattlesnakes, slaughter them in front of kids. Kids can bathe their hand in blood and put handprints on the wall. It's disgusting but they're destroying so many of these animals. It's ridiculous. And it's crazy to think that this is happening in the United States and it's allowed to go on. But there are still several species of rattlesnake that are either completely wiped out in certain areas that they once lived. Like when we talked about the timber rattlesnake in some areas in the United States and also in Canada, they've been completely wiped out. Well, since this video took longer than I was planning on, we're going to break up the video into different parts. So this one, just the general overview of rattlesnakes in general. And then the next videos are going to be on the genus Crotalus and Cistrusrus. But thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Love you all. Take care.